Are you exhausted even after a full night of sleep? You are not alone. This happens to a lot of the high performance entrepreneurs that we work with when we first engage. In fact, the other day I was asked this by one of our newest clients that he had done everything that he had read online to master his sleep, but he still was feeling exhausted. This video is about the specific conversation we had and the protocol I gave him to optimize every single little thing that affects your energy levels. If you are a high performance entrepreneur working all day, every day, and you want to sustain high energy, this video is for you. Welcome back. My name is Leon Castillo, founder of Submaster Peak Performance Institute for Founders. We help you scale your business fast without procrastination, overwhelm, and burnout. So this protocol tackles every single aspect that affect your energy. And it's all predicated on very simple idea, which is the fact that you are already a high energy human being. And if you're not showing up as such, it's because there are things that are preventing you from showing up at high energy. And that typically is stresses that you don't know how to manage. In other words, your energy is predicated on your ability to manage your stress levels at every part of yourself, your spiritual stresses, psychological stresses, and physiological stresses. And this video is going to go one by one to help you realize the things that you can improve to naturally increase your energy. The most basic level, and this is level number one, is your physiology. This is what most people typically understand. Your physiology, which is in essence your nervous system, requires to be optimized for you to be high energy. And there's three most basic habits that affect your health and really the health of your nervous system and your health as a whole, which is how are you sleep, how's your nutrition, and how's your exercise. Sleep is very easy to understand. The better your sleep, the more energy that you will have. If you want to get very specific, what we recommend our clients is that they go to bed and spend eight hours in bed in order to have about 7.5 hours of sleep every single night. Why 7.5 hours? Because those are five sleep cycles. If you wake up in the middle of a cycle, you typically wake up groggy. If you wake up right at the end of one cycle, you will wake up fully energized and ready to go. And research proved that 7.5 hours is the sweet spot for elite sleep levels. Now, if you want to go even deeper, we typically consider that you had a good night's sleep when your REM sleep and your deep sleep account for more than 45% of the time spent in bed. This is what we call restorative sleep. So if you have more than 45% of the time spent in bed in restorative sleep, you slept well. Now, on the nutrition side, the goal is to avoid unnecessary spikes and then crashes of glucose in blood. So in order to avoid that, we have foods that are low in the glycemic index. The best thing you can eat is meat, it's poultry, it's eggs, things that keep your energy high. And finally, on the exercise side of things, in order to be high energy, you don't need to go overboard. 45 minutes per session, five sessions a week is more than enough to stay on top of your physical health. I typically recommend three to four days of weightlifting and one to two days of cardio. I do four days of weightlifting, one day of cardio every single week. If you have those three things nailed down, your physiological fundamentals are well set. There's one more thing though that most people kind of forget is that the same way we have sleep cycles during the night, we also have energy cycles during the day. This is just how we're built. These are called ultradian cycles and they deeply affect our energy and performance. So if you are working throughout the day without paying attention to the cycles, if you're just showing up at work and working without a strategy, you're typically accumulating unnecessary stress buildup in your system. The solution is to work in 90 minute increments in which you are focused on one task and one task only. You don't get distracted at all. And when your focus starts to dwindle, which it will, you stop working and give your brain the ability to recharge. This is how you honor your own ultradium rhythms and you can sustain a higher level 
of energy throughout the day. In fact, some of our clients, when they implement the protocols that we give them, they typically report that they feel at 7 p.m. at night as refreshed as they would normally feel at noon on any given day before they work with us. Why? Because we teach them this way of honoring your own circadian rhythms for peak productivity and performance. Right, so that is the physiological aspect that goes into energy management. And the better you are at sleeping, exercising, eating, and honoring your own rhythms, the better your energy will be. Now, step number two is managing your brain, right? Because having a nervous system that is well optimized is not enough if you are getting distracted every single minute. Because this day is the biggest culprit of energy mismanagement at the level of the brain is technological distraction. We're just surrounded by swarms of inputs that are engineered to hook our attention. And the more hooked we are, the more we mess up with our dopamine system. And we, in essence, dysregulate the hormonal balance that helps with alertness and focus. So if we sleep perfectly and all the physiological basics are covered, but we are constantly glued to a screen, we are messing up with our hormones, which is preventing us from being peak energy. The specific thing that happens in the brain is that the more you look at a screen and the more you multitask, the more you switch your attention between tasks and projects, the more attention residue gets generated. Your brain works a little bit like a computer, it has a RAM that can deploy on short-term tasks. If that RAM is piled up with tons of stressors that add zero value over the course of the day, your focus dwindles to the point that if you sustain this many days in a row, you can eventually develop something called continuous partial attention in which your stress level is mobilized every day. You're constantly scanning for threats, never really focusing on anything. And therefore, you cannot sustain high cognitive energy because you're constantly distracted, scanning for threats in the environment that will never materialize. Now, step number three is how you manage your mind because you may be very well slept, nutrition on point, exercise, you're not checking your phone more than you should, but then you're not using the mind the right way. And the number one culprit for mental mismanagement in entrepreneurs is having the wrong expectations and also measuring the progress the wrong way. Because everything that you do is related to your belief system and your cognition, how you think about your thoughts, your emotions, and your behaviors. And if you have an expectation about an outcome that you want to achieve with your work, you are automatically binding your own psychological well-being to the realization of that outcome. If that outcome doesn't happen, you're basically telling yourself you're going to be uh, unhappy and therefore your performance is going to go down. Since we are genetically wired to feel content and show up with higher energy when there's progress, when there's growth, when we're feeling like we're progressing, when we are missing out on our own expectations for a few times, we eventually enter a negative feedback loop. So mismanagement of the mind is a huge, huge blocker of peak performance. And that is even exacerbated by how most entrepreneurs measure their progress. Instead of thinking about how much they have accomplished in the past, they think about how much there is left until they achieve that expectation that they set for themselves. So instead of thinking about the things that are actually going their way, they think about everything that is not going their way, which leads to dissatisfaction, leads to eventual self sabotage. In the case of this client of ours, we realized that he was having high expectations on achieving things that were not under his control. And he was failing down because he was not getting the outcomes, but there was no way he would ever get those outcomes because he had no control over those outcomes. So we told him to reframe that We do something called cognitive reframing, which is how can I think about a situation so that it allows me to move forward. We're not going to get deep into what it is in this video. I have this video here is going to help you with that. But in essence, how you manage your mind and how you label what happens to you is what eventually helps you perform at a higher level. And the final level that not many people discuss that sounds woo woo for most, but it's arguably the most important thing is your spiritual energy. Bear in mind, this is very important. I didn't thought this was relevant years ago, but now I absolutely convinced this is the source of all peak performance. You cannot really be a peak performer 
if you are not intrinsically and purposefully connected with what you're doing, if there's no meaning in what you do. That is spirituality, is understanding what are the intrinsic drivers of your life. What are you feeling motivated by? What is the thing that you feel called to do on this earth? And at this level, spiritual stressors are every time you are misaligned with what you're doing. You are partaking in activities you don't believe in. You're saying things that are not true. You are not pursuing what you believe to be your highest passion. Let's assume that you're, you know, you value environmentalism and you are working at a, an oil company for whatever. Believe it or not, over time, that is going to build up in your mind a dissatisfaction. You're going to have a spiritual misalignment that is going to result in low energy. In the case of Mark Klein, who was an entrepreneur, is that he wasn't really feeling that his work through his business was doing an impact anymore. Even though he was making money, was profitable, had a team, whatever, but he had lost that spark. So we helped him reframe what he was doing in order to get that spark back. Because a huge misconception at this point is that spirituality has to be some sort of grandiose connection to a higher power. And that could very well be the case. But the most important element of that is that you feel like your work is meaningful to others. And those others can be your family, can be your community, can be your country, can be humanity at large, it doesn't matter. You can go as big or as small as you can, but it has to matter. If it doesn't matter, you are going to stop doing it. And remember, you cannot beat someone who shows up to do for fun what you do for work. So these are the four pillars of high energy. First, you nail your physiology. You understand what are your natural rhythms. You work according to those ultradian rhythms. You take care of your sleep, your nutrition, your exercise, and you make sure you're not spending your day glued to a screen, accumulated attention residue that eventually turns your brain mush. You also need to pay attention to your psychology, the expectations that you have about the goals that you're chasing and how you're measuring progress have a direct impact in your performance. In fact, the way you turn high stress into burnout is precisely by mismanaging the psychological aspect from high stress. Because you can be very highly stressed working on something that is deeply meaningful to you, that you purposefully care about, that you're measuring your, everything is going the right way. But then at some point, you start measuring what's missing instead of what you have. You start having expectations that are not connected with reality. Eventually, you will burn. And the final step is meaning, is purpose, is spiritual connection with what you're doing. It's showing up knowing that your work is helping people, that whatever those people are, doesn't matter, that your life has some sort of meaning that helps you, in essence, work harder. Well, so these are the four pillars that affect energy. And this is what we told our client. And we did the necessary tweaks to help him show up much differently in the subsequent weeks. In fact, a couple of days ago, he told me that now he's able to do in one day what he previously would take a couple of weeks to accomplish. Why would that be the case? Well, because he's now a 10 out of 10 energy every single day, boom. So he's making the right choices, working with the right intensity and being five or 10 times more productive, right? So think it this way. This is exactly what the difference between average and elite performance. If you want our help, you know where to find us, book a call. And if it makes sense, we will help you. And if not, it's still, Watch this video many times, understand every single layer of what I just said and apply it so you can purposefully become everything that you could be. See you in the next video.